Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa <clears> tiyallah <throat> tiya Rasul ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukal ajeez wa da'eefa wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted this immense blessing to be in the month of Ramadan and to be from the servants trying their best to keep the way of Ramadan and the lights and blessings of Ramadan inshaAllah. And that Alhamdulillah Allah granted us to enter into the gate of Rahmah and then the second day, 10 days the gates of maghfirah and forgiveness addressing us from a mercy so that we can fast. And once we begin to fast Allah start to dress with oceans of forgiveness and the washing and the cleansing of the soul. And then alhamdulillah the last 10 days Allah begin to open upon the soul that's come in a nar that a distance from the fire and a proximity to the light and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and that alhamdulillah Allah grant for us this immense love and immense mercy, immense blessings and that the light of Qur'an inshaAllah to be guiding us, dressing us and the people of Marifa understanding that that the house and location of Holy Qur'an is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad And these are the times of immense mercy and rahmah in which what Allah wants to grant can only be achieved by fasting. Abstinence, fasting with their mouth, fasting with their ears, fasting with their eyes fasting with the breath, the hands, the feet and with all of the being, all of our being entering into that fast so that Allah to purify all the senses and to purify the soul which being the highest sense is the sense of taste and that's the spiritual path of taste and dhawq that you can do all your spiritual practices and all your physical prayers but it must lead to a a taste and that has to be purified. When Allah want to grant success in the physical fast, they begin to achieve with their spiritual fast in which Allah open their taste and the reality of taste in which they taste their practices, they taste the energy, they taste all of its realities and all of its emissions inshaAllah. That Allah dress us from these nights and bless us from these nights and gave us an immense reward that in the last 10 nights we have the power nights which are the odd that the 21st, the 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th these are uh, power oceans in which Allah would dress the servants with the immense realities of Holy Qur'an and that Allah grant for us to be amongst the Qadri shaykhs. And these are the shaykhs in whom Allah has granted their eternal oceans of power, that Allah is continuously dressing them that to give them Alim al-Qadir. We said before that when Allah want to dress the servant with these realities, dresses them from an ancient ocean of Sifat al alim and grant them Ayn. And based on the reality of that Ayn, Ayn also means spiritual vision and Ayn is the first letter for Allah's ancient knowledges, Ayn al alim Then when Allah want to grant them from these oceans and these realities then they become the people of the ayn and the vision in which Allah leads them to perfect their spiritual vision and open their spiritual vision. 
As a result of the opening of their knowledges and spiritual visions Allah dresses them from His oceans of Qadir. And these are the ancient oceans of power that are powered by Holy Qur'an. So all this comes together like beads on a tasbih. As you draw close to the Qur'an it is the source of all power and that's the source of power for the entire created and uncreated universes. And that power emanating from the holy heart and the qalb of Sayyidina Muhammad That is the qaf and the qudra, Qur'an that we are trying to be dressed from. When you love that qalb and you do everything to be within the qalb, within that heart. For those whom are, are new to Arabic, don't worry, try to write the notes, someday it begins to open within the heart. That this heart in English doesn't mean anything but in Arabic when Allah gave its ancient spelling qaf, lam, ba and these are the essential letters and that qaf wal Qur'anin Majeed comes to this lisan and tongue in which Allah created a tongue to eternally represent His realities. And that tongue when it begins to speak becomes a bah, becomes the ocean of all power and all realities. That qalb is Sayyidina Muhammad's Divinely heart. As we draw near with this love, with these practices, with these associations because this is Ramadan, this is the month in which Allah wants to draw us and dress us in these oceans of power. That we make our sacrifices in this month and many people are being sacrificed. Some people think that it's only a time of you know immense blessings, yes but at the same time Allah requires a sacrifice. He's asking us to abstain. Abstain from food, from water, from bad character means he may take anything he wants in this month as a means of purifying the servant. And by means of their sacrifice and what they give of that sacrifice Allah in exchange gives much better from Divinely Presence. So it means people's lives go in Ramadan, people's properties go in Ramadan, people have immense difficulties in Ramadan and doesn't mean that Allah forsaken them but Allah loves them. Allah take from them a difficulty and a imperfection and grant to them immense realities and immense blessings for nothing, nothing is lost in the way of Allah Means that when we enter with these lights and these, these blessings at kumina nar means Allah dressing at kumina nar free from fire because Allah is dressing from the reality of the fire upon the servant. You're free from the fire that burns you and burns all that's other than Allah But like a moth to the flame when you come with nothing of those bad characteristics to the degree that you hope Allah has washed them like a moth you return to the flame and that fire now becomes the fire of qudra and power. And that's why Allah dressed the 10 days in Qadr that as I'm washing away and burning away your sins, it's the sins that make the fire to be heated and to make somebody feel like they don't want to go into the fire. But this fire becomes a fire of ishq in which Allah cleaned the servant, perfected the servant and like a moth to the flame they move into these oceans of power and Allah begin to dress them with these oceans of power. And if anybody wants to experience Laylatul Qadr keep the company of Qadri shaykhs who are Muhammadiyoon and they represent the lightning emanating from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And anyone in them and around them what Allah described to Sayyidina Musa Blessed be those whom are in these holy precincts, in it and around it they are blessed. And that was from the Prophets of Bani Israel 
what from then the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and Ashiqiyoon whom they represent the Muhammadan garden. All those whom enter into that garden, smell the fragrance of that garden are blessed by just the smell of the fragrance are blessed. Those whom sit and eat and, and actively live within the gardens they are blessed. And they are under the dress of these Qadri realities, they, they take the dress of the Qadri nights and the Qadri lights and these are the realities of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and Layl means to annihilate. Every time the, these holy nights and these holy realities and Layl is a station in which to not manifest. Allah describes, we created your day for your work. So means the day is a time in which we manifest but night time is a time for Allah in which the world sleeps and the reality of manifestation and the hidden becomes more apparent. These are all the analogies of night time for us Allah see how the night you see nothing? That's how you should be approaching Allah as nothing. So when Laylat al-Qadr means that in these immensities of, of reaching towards a nothingness, understanding that they're nothing compared to Allah nothing compared to Sayyidina Muhammad nothing compared to Ashiqiyoon and all these lovers, companions and Ahlul Bayt, as a result they entered into a state of Layl. And in that Layl they're moving into these oceans of love and ishq and those souls whom the shaykhs have taken in these eight, nine months now entering in like a caravan into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to be dressed by Qadr, to be dressed by lights and blessings. And this is the reality of Laylatul Qadr is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what Allah described in Surat Al-Taqweer, this is the surah for this month in which is the month of annihilation and anyone whom reading Surat Al-Taqweer it reads all about how when Allah is annihilating, when the stars fall from the sky, when the heavens are rent asunder, when everything is collapsing because that's the reality of the layl, that everything is going to collapse, nothing will manifest. Nothing manifests except the reality and the power emanating from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be dressed by its blessings and, and dressed by its realities. Allah described <clears throat> a shahid, if you can read the… the Surat Taqweer has mashaAllah 29 verses because of the reality of 29 and annihilation. Let's, let's read from we can read from Surah 24 till 29 inshaAllah, Surat Taqweer 81. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما هو على الغيب بذنين وما هو بقول الشيطان الرجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم. بارك الله فيك سورة كريم حبيب العظيم. This surah the taqwir is the secret of holy Ramadan that Allah Zubjal gave to this holy month. In this way of marifa to end up on the 81st surah, Surat al taqweer And that Allah gave us a code that it's 29 verses. And 29 is the gate of Lam Alif, the reflection of 92, which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. 
And Allah Azza asking with Sayyidina um, verse 26, so where are you going? Because they were coming against, everything is going to be destroyed, everything is annihilated. And then they were insulting Prophet and Allah then giving their reality, so where are you going? <laughs> their translation is, and they said, it's not but a reminder to the world, but that's not correct. They're hiding the translation, innahu dhikrun lil alameen, innahu dhikrun lil alameen. Allah clarifying for awliyaullah, innahu means this is the immense reality of Sayyidina Muhammad the who that reflects the who of Allah where Allah refers to him وسلم, huwa inna huwa dhikrun lil alameen. That he, the essence and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he is the dhikr of all the worlds. وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ When Allah describes Surat al-Inshira وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ have we not raised your remembrance? Means these words don't mean anything for dunya people and dunya people are people at the masjid. These are only understood by those whom entered into malakut and to the world of light. Because Allah is asking them that you see the light, you hear the dhikr and the tasbih of angels whom their dhikr and tasbih, Allahumma, 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 that Allah made everything, everything to be in the salawat and dhikr of Sayyidina Muhammad Every time they say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad, they are praising upon Allah while keeping their ihtiram and respect about praising upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah giving that, that isharat in this holy surah that you are, not the, you are but the reminder for all of creations, your remembrance is for all of creations. And for whoever wants to take the right course because they feel it's in their own will that they can come to realities, they can come to belief, they can come to, to haqqaiqs, Allah says, nope. And you do not accept that Allah must will that you come to the right course. Means that Allah Allahu Rabbul Alameen, it's not you that determines you're going to take the right course or you're going to come to haqqaiqs. But it has to be a sharat and a command from Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Rabbil Alameen that Allah has to guide whom He guides to this love of Sayyidina Muhammad and to the realities which are not meant for everyone. Those whom are listening, glad tidings to you. Those whom don't understand, hold on, keep coming. These are the realities of Holy Qur'an dressing the souls of awliyaullah from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad with its immensities, its lights and its blessings. That as they're drawing into the Qadr nights means they're asking from these lights and these blessings, وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ that Allah raised the immensity of your reality throughout all alameen, throughout everything in creation. Its essence and reality from the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. And through that immense power you're drawing in, imagine all the universes are being dressed by these blessings and then the people of Marafa, they're in the inner core of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad being dressed and blessed by all these lights, by all these powers, by all these realities. And then what Allah describes for Laylatul Qadr, anzannahu, anzannahu, manzannahu, you passed it.
means these are the oceans of power. That Allah describing, yeah, of course it's worth a thousand months, it's worth a thousand lifetimes. That all these universes are drawing near into the center of power. That is the power for every created universe, for every created being and uncreated whatever is in creation. It's emanating from the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah then describing, of course anything related to that is a thousand lifetimes, thousand months. And that's why anything to do with these Qadri shaykhs, anything to do with these Qadri realities is multiplied Allah by 30,000. Imagine that a shaykh from that reality and dressing their students from that reality, Allah then describing their life like a thousand months. Every action that they do, that's how we came from the thousand months. Those who are good at math, every month has a 30 days. Means that every day for them is multiplied by 30,000. Every time they pray it Allah multiplies their ajr and reward by 30,000. Every time they fast, every fast, every every action that they do Allah has boosted them. So people who play video games, you play at level 1 or you play at level 30,000. Every action that they do Allah is boosting their action and granting them salamun hiya hatta mitna al-fajr. We are continuously sending our salams upon them until their fajr, means their entire day is dressed by these realities. And that's when people don't understand anymore, don't understand the reality of the shaykhs, don't understand that these Qadri shaykhs whom Allah dressed and gave this understanding and these knowledges what type of realities they can contain, what type of blessings they dress upon the servant. Few of the servants understand until they reach a state of death. Only at that time will they understand that who they accompanied and what they were dressed from of those realities. But Allah gives to them these understandings to understand. Those whom, who know, they know. Those whom Allah expand their understanding then keeps expanding their understanding. That's the immensity of these lights and the immensity of these blessings. That by accompanying them they're dressed by these red blessings, they're, they're given from these immense oceans of barakah and mercy because they are from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad There's never a time when a shaykh is not a shaykh. And that's when people are lost from these realities they're teaching. Because even from the family of the shaykh they say, no you're like a father for us at this time and this time you're like a shaykh for us. But in reality there is no time that Allah doesn't look at that servant as the shaykh, right? He's always the shaykh in Allah's eyes. You treat him bad thinking he's the father, I can say what I want, you're incorrect because to Allah that title doesn't exist. The title that exists is that that person died, they represent a reality and the office of that reality is what Allah deems to be of importance. The personality died many years ago, the office that that person represents is that reality. You can't take the good and leave other things, means you, you take the barakah and the blessings of that person's reality and station. Means that at all times, that's why these are the schools of adab, they are that reality. At all time Sayyidina Muhammad was Sayyidina Muhammad Even at home he is Sayyidina Muhammad There was no difference in governing. There was no difference in anything, means that Allah was in a continuous state of dressing that reality and Prophet was in a continuous state of representing that reality. And that's what the, the dress and the blessings of that reality, that the office in which they hold, the representation in which they represent, these are the lights of it, these are the dressings of it, these are the blessings of it 
These are the realities of that reality and as a result that reality is salamun hiya hatta mata al-fajr. Allah describing that reality we're addressing every day all the way till the fajr time. Means whatever they eat, wherever they walk, whatever they do has these immense blessings upon the servant. And we described before Prophet then makes it even more powerful and begins to describe those Qadiri shaykhs, they're the people of tafakkur. And if they understood tafakkur, Prophet described one hour of their tafakkur is like 70 years of worship. Now the number just went up. One hour is like 70 years of worshipness because their heart is alive. <coughs> and Prophet was describing a reality based on his own reality but hidden for those who didn't understand. Because the people of tafakkur they're receiving their power from the presence of Prophet He's describing them indirectly that their one hour in my presence is like 70 years of your worship. Uh, and that becomes what we calculated about 1400 years in one day by accompanying them. Means you live lifetimes, there's no way to achieve when God wants to give you these types of rewards. There's no way you can go to achieve this. There's no itikaf that you can make to achieve this. There's no zakat you can give to achieve this. That's why Allah says at the end of Surah Al Taqwir, it's not for you to will that you want to now achieve these realities. But it has to come from Allah who are Rabbul Alameen, which in its own secret, who are Rabbul Alameen? Means from that presence of Rabbul Alameen has to give permission to guide you to the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the Muhammadan reality to be dressed by immensity of its blessings. Alhamdulillah as a reminder for myself always in these holy nights, there's a story with many different versions. But the gist of it and the importance of it as a reminder for faith after what we described of these realities. There was a Khalifa by the name of Harun al-Rashid and this was all in Iran in the areas of, of Khurasan. <coughs> it was from the Abba, Abba, Abbasid dynasty and the stories are, are very famous amongst Taskiyat al-Awliya and the story of Awliya, Harun al-Rashid was the king and his brother Balul was of a pious and saintly nature and they had many interactions. And one of the interactions that we posted always as a reminder from these teachings and Qadri nights and this way of tariqah is that Balul was making houses out of sticks and in the entryway of the palace and he was making these houses. <clears throat> and putting a for sale sign and as the king was mounting coming down the walkway and looking at Balloon and always thinking down upon him, never recognizing his station and always interacting with him in, in this type of understanding because he represented only a material understanding in life and immense wealth, immense wealth as this Khalifa and he looks to, to his brother, as Alaikum Balul, how are you, Walaykum As Salaam, what are you doing? He said, I'm selling palaces. And he said, palaces? Well how much is this palace that you've made from sticks? He said, uh, normally they're one dirham but I give a price for you because you're a king, 100 dirham. This is a price fit for a king. And he looked at it and he said, one dirham, you sell everybody for one dirham and for me you want to sell for a hundred dirham, Ugh, I don't need it. And what do I get in exchange? He said, you get a house in paradise. I said, no, it's okay, thank you. He walked in. Then the wife who was walking behind Harun Rashid walked in said, As Salaamu Alaikum Balloon, Wa Alaikum Salaam, what are you selling here? He says, I'm selling houses in paradise. So how much are these houses in paradise? So said, this little matchstick is one dirham. This house from sticks, one dirham. 
So for me one dirham? Say, yes, alhamdulillah. Here's your dirham, alhamdulillah. What do I get in exchange for the dirham? He says, you get house in paradise. So, oh mashaAllah, alhamdulillah and walked in. And that night the Khalifa of the nation had a dream and the angels came to him and showed him to look, look at all these palaces. And they were, he was astonished, well, what are these palaces? He said, these are the palaces your brother is selling. And he said, look at that one over there and he looked and he tried to enter. The angel says, not for you, it's for your wife. He said, can't I enter? He said, no, of course you can't. This is your wife's palace, she bought this for her one dirham. <laughs> he was so upset that he wasn't allowed into that palace and he was shocked by the dream. He immediately came back to his uh, awakening, he stayed awake the whole time just to wait for morning time to run back out to Balul. <laughs> And he woke, he washed and he went and ran out to Balul and said, ah Balul, uh, where are those palaces you were selling? He said, the palace, oh, I have a palace, here's one I made. He said, how much is this? He said, one million dirham. He said, one million dirham? Yesterday it was one dirham for, for other people, it was a hundred dirham for me. Now why one million dirham? He said, because the angels took that one that you saw, they took it up and now they reveal to you its value. So the cost now for you is one million dirham and that was too much for him to, to swallow and he walked away with immense reward, with immense, immense remorse and a sadness that he didn't take it at the one or the hundred dirham. And the rule for this understanding and the immensity of, of this way is that anytime Allah offers a reward and a goodness, be quick to take it. Don't postpone a goodness, don't use the mind in a goodness, don't think, I can do this in another way, I can achieve it in another way. You have no way of achieving these realities. That Allah was working through the hand of a wali to sell worthless pieces of stick so that they would have an exchange. We said before there has to be a contractual exchange, there has to be in a contract it's called consideration. Consideration has to be given, the contract is bound and now the reward is set by Allah In this way of faith is not the way of the material world. This is a way in which Allah give to the servants, if you believe then interact with them. And every interaction with them is going to have its rewards. More than what the people can wear and eat and drink or, or participate in, Allah is taking from their dunya giving them paradises in exchange. We don't know what sickness they take away, what difficulties they take away, what openings they open within the heart. But this is the way of faith, this is the way of tariqahs and this is the way of Sayyidina Khidr which was describing to Nabi Musa no way will you have patience with me because of what little you understood. Means what little people have of understanding confuses them in the ways of tariqah. The why is this like this? Why is like this? Why like this? Who has like this? I can get this like this. But you know, always remember the example of uh, Sayyidina Balul who was a big awliya and selling paradise on a one dollar stick or two dollar stick. Means this is the way of faith and we pray that Allah grant us faith, grant us yaqeen, grant us certainty, grant us the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.